Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. The second glorious mystery we contemplate the ascension of Jesus into heaven. Let us pray. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. In the third mystery, we contemplate the descent of the Holy Spirit in Pentecost. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Ave, Ave. Ave Maria, Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. In the fourth glorious mystery, we contemplate the Assumption of Mary into heaven. Let us pray. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, 
now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. In the fifth glorious mystery, we contemplate the coronation of Our Lady in Heaven. Our Father, who art in Heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Ave, Ave. Ave Maria, Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. We fly to your patronage, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us from all dangers. O ever glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Saint Joseph, in the name of the Father, of the Son, Holy Spirit. Amen.
Good evening. Welcome to St. Anne's. Please rise for our Holy Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve you with constancy, the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors, and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Speak to God.
children like olive plants around your table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem. All the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and season, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness, Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one 
one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His masters said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have met, made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest in my return? Now then, take the talent from him and gave it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Why is it that the one who had received only one talent dug a hole and buried the talent instead of putting it to work? He had received enough to do something and even more than enough. Scholars say that one talent was equivalent to 6,000 denarii. A denarius was the usual payment for a day's labor. At one denarius per day, a single talent was therefore worth 16 years of labor. So it's not that the man didn't have enough to invest in something and to make it work. One talent was more than enough to begin something. So then, why didn't he do it, knowing that his master was going to demand some interest? In his defense, when the master comes back, he claims fear and accuses his master of being too demanding. And the master, as we heard, does not contest this accusation, but builds his case on it. If you knew I was demanding, why didn't you do something about it? Do you think fear is a good excuse? So let's delve a little into fear. Fear is not a sin in itself, it's just an emotion, or to use a more classical term, a passion, something that we suffer, that happens to us. And it happens before a potential threat. So fear can be rational and healthy when the threat is real. A while ago we were with some of the guys at the St. John Society, we went to a hiking or camping trip into the glacier National Park, and we were told that we could potentially meet some grizzly bears, so we had some fear, some rational fear, and we bought some you know, bear sprays and bear canisters to put our food for the night. We didn't want to meet any bear close, <laughs> close to us at least. We spot one, in fact, but he was, he was safely away. So. A rational and proportionate fear makes 
as prudent and wise, and it's good, it's, it's a good thing to have. But more often than not, our fears are disproportionate and irrational. We are afraid to fail in general, to be left alone, to age, to be embarrassed, to lose our job, to lose our loved ones. We are afraid to sickness. For example, I was beginning the Mass, and I was thinking of my homily, and an irrational fear that I have is that I will begin the Mass and I will forget everything, that I, I won't know what to do. Isn't that irrational? So we have these strange fears that come to us that are out of proportion. And these fears might linger in our minds with a, without a proper reason. Sure, all these things could happen to us in one way or the other, but without a particular reason for you to be afraid about them here and now. Often our fears begin with something true. We're not afraid of dra dragons, for example. We might get sick, we might fail, we will age, we will die at some point, but they grow disproportionately and then we are paralyzed. They are lingering in the, in the backdrop of our minds and they tend to freeze us. So what should we do with our disproportionate fears? Well, we should act as if we didn't have them. And I'm not saying here you we should feel as we didn't have them because that is not up to us. We feel them, it's a passion. Sometimes we cannot change that at least in the moment. But we can act as if we didn't have them. We should not let them have the last word. But we can do a strong movement of our will. We can make a bold act of trust in God our Father, in whose providence we live. We could ask ourselves, what would I do if I didn't have this fear? How would I act if I didn't have this emotion in this moment? And then you do just that. Again, when this fear is irrational and disproportionate. So don't let, don't let fears rule your life. Because if you let them rule your life, you won't do much. You will most probably bury your talent and it will be no excuse. In this parable, Jesus challenges us in our fears and pushes us to move beyond them. Most of our fears are not godly. If you think about them, they are atheistic. They don't factor in God and his providence and his care and his love for us and his fatherly presence in our life. They dwell in us as if God didn't exist, as if we really were alone, as if there was no providence in our lives. And so they grow. Okay, in this parable, the master accuses the servant of being lazy. He doesn't take that excuse, though. He says, you lazy and no, wicked and lazy servant. And in fact, fear and laziness are related, are often related. Fear is an emotion and laziness is a behavior. We become lazy. We act in a lazy way. And I did some research here because Aquinas, he connects fear and reason. He says that, we, um, that, that fear might be one of the reasons why we slide into laziness. We could be afraid of the toil. We could be afraid of the effort that we have to put into something. We might be, it, it might seem too much. We might think that we cannot do it. So then we can be afraid of even trying, lest we fail. We could be afraid of desiring something, lest I become disappointed. We could be afraid of beginning a relationship, lest I get hurt. And so fear leads to inaction. I am afraid. I don't want to even try. I don't want to even begin. 
and so I'm paralyzed. Instead of risking of going out, then we stay in our pajamas. We stay in the, in the spot. We don't want to go out. We are afraid. And we little by little become more lazy. But we could be lazy for other reasons, not only because of fear. We could become lazy because we little by little get used to indulging and gratifying our immediate desires. And so by doing that, but always saying yes to our immediate desires, we weaken our capacity to deny our moods, our superficial desires for the sake of something bigger. It's like our will gets weaker if we never deny ourselves. Or we could be lazy because we are sad. Sadness is also an emotion that leads to laziness, a behavior. Isn't that true that when you are sad, you don't want to get out of bed? You become lazy. But then when you indulge in that behavior, you're even more, 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 more sad. Hmm? sad. Sadder, you would say. Great. Or we could be lazy because we lost hope. We become hopeless and there's no hope. Why even bother? Why even try? The reality is that the master in this parable says to the servant, lazy and wicked servant, because laziness led him to selfishness. He began by just being lazy, but ended up wicked, selfish, just thinking about himself. He just buried the talent and didn't do anything. And if you think about it, selfishness, uh, laziness leads you to selfishness, because you can't do much for others. You're too self-centered. You're too, paying too much attention to your emotions, to your world, to your feelings, to what you want to do. And even if you would like to go beyond yourself, there's a moment where it seems that you lost that capacity. Someone needs to pull you out of that hole. How can we combat laziness? What can we do if we see in us this behavior, and we all have a tendency to slide in this behavior one way or the other. It's a weakness, it's a human weakness. Well, I want to suggest three things. The first one is identify what emotion is behind your laziness. Is it fear? Is it sadness? Is it hopelessness? Is it cynicism? So address the emotion. See why you feel that way. Once you realize I'm lazy because of this emotion that is behind this behavior, then you need to address it. You need to, you need to see if it's a proportional emotion, if it fits reality. Not every emotion of, us, of ours fit reality. Some emotions are out of place. And then you need to speak to it if it's out of place or irrational. If you don't speak to your emotion, if you let your emotion have the last word on your life, then they will tend to govern you. They will claim that last word in your life. And you will make decisions uh, ruled by your emotions, which is no good. Emotions are good in themselves, of course. They're God-given. We need them. They're the gas of the car, if you want. But they're not the steer wheel. Emotions are energy to go out and to do things, but they shouldn't have the direction of your life. For that, God gave us intelligence and will and the Holy Spirit, of course, that comes to us and guides us. So speak to your emotion. Trust in God. He's not too demanding. That's a lie. He's your father. He doesn't harvest where he, where he didn't uh, plant. It's a lie. That's the lie of the enemy. So trust in God. Also trust in yourself. And trust in your safety network, in your friends, in your family, in the people around you. And then just move forward. So the first thing is identify your emotion behind your laziness. The second thing is imagine what kind of person you would become if you were to overcome your laziness. If you were to study more or work out better, 
or risk more in your relationships or pray more regularly? What would your life look like if you multiply your talents? Try to picture the goodness and the beauty that you're missing by your laziness, what you're missing out. Try to think about it. Think, for example, what if I do this for a whole year? What if I read scripture for a whole year? What if I do sit-ups for a whole year? What if I go for a run for a whole year, you know, three times a week? What if I do works of mercy for a whole year and visit the homeless or help out in some place? What would I look like? What would my soul look like? In what type of person I would become? What if I study consistently for a whole year? So that you make yourself excited about that goal. Because if you're not excited about that goal, why would you bother? Why would you even try? So you want to see the beauty, the goodness that God is proposing to you when he gave you those talents. So that then you can work on them. And finally, you want to practice some discipline. Once you got excited, when you, once you got motivated, once you saw why is it that you have to put some effort into this, then you want to lay it down as a discipline. Because multiplying your talents is a long-term goal, isn't it? It's not something that you do from one day to the other. The master takes a long time, says the parable, to come back. He leaves space for the servants to invest their talents and to put them to work. And there's no multiplication of talents without discipline, without laborious effort, day in and day out, without constancy. In the big opening prayer, I don't know if you paid attention, we, we said to, the, to God, Lord, help us to love you with constancy. Like every day, in every circumstance, with perseverance, so that we can multiply our talents. Your talents are God-given and not yours to do whatever you want. We know as Christians we are administrators of our life. We receive these talents so that we could put them to work and everyone else around us can somehow benefit from them. So it's not up to you to decide how many talents you begin with. You can begin with one, with two, or with five. It's not up to you. You don't want to compare yourself with others. You don't want to look around. We have more than enough to begin doing something with them, don't we? we? We do. So we can begin by making a list of your talents. Assess your gifts, intellectual gifts, emotional, social, educational, physical, spiritual, economical. Make a list of your talents, of the opportunities that you have in life. Are you smart? No, Father. <laughs> Yes, good, then that's a talent, you're smart. Are you young? Some of us are young, some of us are not, but being young is a talent for sure. It doesn't last long, but you have it. Are you social? Is it easy for you to connect with others, to bring people together? That's a talent. Did you receive a good education? Were you able to go to good schools and colleges? That's a talent. Do you have a good family that supports you, that is behind you? That's a talent. Do you have faith? That's a great talent. It's a huge talent. Do you believe in God? And this is a rhetoric question. No? So make a list. Receive them. Be grateful for them. Begin by assessing them. And then develop a plan a rule of life that factors in your talents. A time to study, a time to work out, a time to pray, a time to work, a time to do words of mercy, a time to cultivate friendships, a time to rest, a time to you know, connect with culture around us, a time to read, a time to go out in nature. You want to have a godly schedule, weekly and then annual, that will reflect your priorities, a rule of life that will reflect your priorities and your, and your talents. So you make sure that you are putting them to work. 
So don't just float adrift with the current of your circumstances or emotions, but claim ownership over your life by doing what you have to do in each moment, by being connected with what you are doing in each moment with all your heart. And for that, you need discipline. Discipline preserves the intensity of our love. As we cultivate discipline, our talents grow, multiply, and we're able to channel our love productively. We become more loving, more fruitful, more productive. And then the master will come and you will share with him his table. As we said, fear could be a reason for our laziness and reciting the creed is a good way to, to combat fear because we proclaim to the world and to ourselves what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now confidently raise our hearts and voices in prayer to our Heavenly Father, the Living God. That our church and parish community may seek the love of God in all things, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our bishops, priests, deacons, and ministers may teach the gospel of forgiveness with conviction and compassion, we pray to the Lord that the legislators and courts of the world's governments may seek equality, justice, and peace for all peoples, we pray to the Lord. For all our parishioners who are ill or recovering, for all who are imprisoned, abused, or suffering in any way, that they may be delivered from every evil, we pray to the Lord. That our disease relatives and friends may be raised by God to the new life of the risen Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord. That God will hear the prayers we now make in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Father, hear these prayers, prayers which you inspire us 
to make through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the price of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim.
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. We are praying in this Mass for Ray family. I didn't <clears throat> mention before, but kept it in my prayers.
thank you, Lord, for this Holy Mass, for the gift of faith, that amazing talent that you gave us, the light of faith. We thank you for your body and your blood. Lord, help us to see our lives as you see them, to be able to assess our talents given by the Father. We don't want to be lazy, Lord. We don't want to be paralyzed by fear or by any other thing. Help us, Lord, to develop some discipline, inspire some discipline in our lives so that we can honor the talents that you gave us, so that we can be attentive for when the Master comes back, when you come back, that we have something beautiful to offer. And at the same time, people around us benefit and come and grow. Lord, in this moment, take away from us any fear, irrational fear. Shake from us any laziness, any sleepiness. Help us to live awake and watchful, in a watchful way. Lord, we don't want to uh, we want to work for you. Strengthen us and lead us. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. We have our lovely page to give us our announcements. Hi everyone, I hope you've had a good Sunday. I just have one announcement, and that's that next Sunday, after the student mass, we'll be having a fellowship night with dessert. So everyone is welcome to come. I hope to see you there. Thank you, Paige. And also, last Sunday we had a little more, a little bit more people than we should have. I think we don't have that problem this Sunday, but last Sunday we had, we had a little bit more. 
So we spoke with Monsignor Watkins. We hopefully will try not to turn anyone away. It's a big church, and if the case may be that we have to put someone in the basement, we'll arrange. We'll see what happens. But so long as we can have you, you know, social distance and safe with your mask, and we can put people in other places in this building, even if it's not in the main church, we will accommodate as much as we can. But for sure, we want to respect you know, the laws of the city. So it would be very helpful if you come early. Because part of the problem is that you, some of you come late. So then the ushers are kind of lost. Uh, you notice that one of the ushers was being more bossy today. And, and that's because we ask him to do that, you know, to accommodate you so that people can fit, especially those who come late uh, in, a, in, a, in a good way. But if you come five minutes before Mass, everything becomes easier. And if the case is that we go beyond the limit, then we can provide for something else. Hmm? Okay. Now I'm forgetting something that I had to say. <laughs> it's my fear. <laughs> oh, the gift card, yes. So we have, um, what was it called? Okay, it's the Angel Tree gift cards. I don't really know exactly what that means, but I think you, you do know. It's something that you do in the parish. The Angel Tree gift card. Mike should be somewhere around to collect that or... But in any case, be attentive to that in the following days. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.